Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Chad Hudson. Thanks for being on the show, Chad. Thanks, Whitney, for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, Chad is the owner and founder. Is, is, is it Savoy? Is that, Am I saying that right? Savoy. Yeah, yes, Savoy sir. Companies. Yeah, which specializes in buying, selling, building, remodeling, and owner financing real estate since 2000. He's done over 100 plus transactions, held over 30 plus rental properties, has, uh, and has over 700 apartments. In addition, uh, managing his successful construction and renovation business, Chad also owns several rental properties and holds multiple private mortgage notes for customers. Uh, Chad, thank you so much for your time and being on the show. Uh, it's obvious you, you know, you've you've been in this in many aspects of this industry and just going to be a wealth of knowledge and and appreciate your uh, just your the value you're going to provide. And uh, but give the listeners a little more about your background and just you know your focus in real estate right now. Yes, sir, Whitney. Again, thanks for having me. Great show you got. I, uh, um, I just thirty thousand view of, of of the twenty year experience that I had. I started in two thousand. I was very fortunate. I graduated from Texas A and M, uh, and I was fortunate enough to play baseball there. I came out on a, or I, I got to the college station on a baseball scholarship, so I came out really debt free, and. Um, I learned so much by being at that university. And, and so obviously when you get out, you, you got to get your feet wet. I knew I wanted to be in real estate. I was in a couple other uh, arenas as far as business wise that, that uh, led to a platform of success as far as real estate investing. I knew I was a real estate guy early on. I wanted to do that and needed a place to, uh, to obviously stay. Um, and I purchased uh, a condo in Rockwall, Texas, out on uh, Lake Ray Hubbard. And, I, you know, nowadays the new term is house hacking, but I had a, uh, one of my best friends live with me. And it was uh, interesting because my mortgage note was uh, roughly 700 bucks, and that's what I charged him rent. So uh, at, at night, I was sitting there thinking, gosh, uh, that was pretty easy. I need to get more of those. So again, we're best friends. We're still friends to this day. And I tease him. He paid about six years of the equity on that place. So, um, you know, fast forward, I, I knew, like I said before, I'm a real estate guy. I wanted to be in real estate investing, but I needed to learn. And I had another company that I worked, worked for and developed. And that whole time, it allowed me to go out and not only do fix and flips, early on, but uh, to build my portfolio and obviously develop and do uh, new construction as well. So the whole time that the goal was to have passive income and we got up a little over 30 units and, and, you know, life chapters as far as getting married and my life partner, which is my wife, Lindsay, she's a, a chief counsel for a company and she's, she was huge, huge help in, in helping grow our, our portfolio and, and the foundation, so to speak. But um, I'm sure you've heard this story before when we got up to 30 units, it's just, it was not scalable and, and we needed to figure out a way to do our uh, job maybe a little better or a little smarter. And, and, and that's kind of where we are today as far as selling off our assets and, and investing in syndication passively and then really getting more involved. So I do hear it often or, or um, you know, you know, you got up to 30 units and you, you found out that it was going to be hard to scale. And so you started looking for another avenue to be able to scale faster. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. You know, when you're young, your ego's big. And, and, and my goal was to have a hundred units and self and self manage them and, and do everything and talk to the tenant and lease it. And then all the while build, you know, build and develop. And, and I just knew after really, um, having start having our first child uh your priorities shift and you know I, it was more important for me to be a dad and uh, a husband and and then so i just uh, i obviously started continuing to learn and um, there's tons of smart people out there and, and it just seemed that was the direction as far as if, if i really wanted to scale up then i had to uh 
get a little bit more smarter about it. So what were some struggles that you had with the 30 units that really pushed you into want, wanting to do multifamily or, or even into syndication? You know, there, there, throughout the process, there's a tons of struggles, but you just kind of persevere, fight through it, hustle. And, and uh, but I would say probably my first eviction, I, I had pretty good units, pretty good properties. And I was familiar with tenants. I was familiar with the type of tenants, great people. It's just, I, I uh, knew that I had, to, I had to remove myself from that particular side after that first eviction. And that was in a five flex that I had. And it was, uh, it was kind of the writing on the wall there that I needed to you know, exit from that side and can and continue to obviously uh, grow the company or grow our portfolio but maybe not be so involved on that side anymore and, and let a professional do it and of course i, I knew um after obviously listen to people like you, you do such a great job but it's just the, the learning process and it's, it's much easier to attack the 200 unit apartment uh versus a 20 unit and, and so that after many, many nights and, and many calculations, we decided to, to start selling most of our asset, our units and, and then and really going big. And it's it's uh it's been good so far. It's uh I tell people all the time it took me, you know, eighteen years to get thirty six doors and it took me about a year to get uh, over eight hundred. So <laughs> Wow, I really like that. And and uh you know, I mean, then was, were those through the syndication process getting those 800? Yes, yes, sir. We're, we're up to a little over 1100 now, but that's through the syndication process and, and strategically, uh, obviously, uh, I, I just felt like if anybody was going to take me serious, obviously I feel like I got a good resume, but I needed to invest in, in, and be a, be a player passively before I, before I asked to be a part of anybody's syndication. And as you know, this space is so small, everyone knows everybody. And, and I like that. And, and my biggest take is, is it's a team sport. And I love that aspect. I feel like, uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's help. And if you're going to be good in this industry, you better get it. You better dang sure get it. Hmm. Yeah, team is is so important, uh, and and you know a lot of people at first are hesitant to be part of a team or partnership, and and I think then they're focused too on what they're get, you know they're focused on thinking they're going to give up something. And I heard somebody say the other day, you know, it's like their I think their spouse was uh, was really against them partnering because they're going to have to give away part of the business or you know or even half of it, something like that. But what he talked about was after being in that for a few years, I mean, just how it just more than quadrupled their business, you know, by being a partnership, being able to focus on specific tasks, you know, not being so overwhelmed with thinking you got to, you have to do everything yourself and, but how they, they got so much, so much further down the road. So, so much faster uh, because of that partnership. Yeah. And I agree with that. I mean, it's, it's those nights of discussing with my wife and she said, I mean, she's the legal beagle and she peels the onion back on every document and reads it. She said, the only negative I see is you giving up your control. And if you're okay with that, then, and at that point I said, if we want to accomplish our goal, I mean, my ego is not big enough. Let's, let's, I'm okay with that. So like I said, we've, we've grew the company uh, and our asset base in a year and that, that, but that took me 18, but I would not Whitney trade that. That was uh, self-taught. It was perseverance. I learned so much. I got to learn every, angle every arena i feel like of real estate investing which could be a broad you know it's a broad definition but it it is uh it's like i've done it all and and i've got the answers to the test now and and i'm ready to go oh, that's awesome i like that analogy and but what would you say to someone who you know is that that person i mean it's impressive that right out of college you know you knew that you wanted to be in real estate and and i, I wish that i had known that that early on uh, but uh, you know, I find a lot more people are getting started earlier now, but I hear it time and time again, you know, someone that's starting in real estate in their forties or fifties or, you know, whatnot. And they say, Oh, I wish I had known earlier, you know, about starting in real estate. So, but what would you say as far as from your experience, you know, you had uh, single families, you have, you've had the construction business, you started with that condo and then now you're, you're into syndication. 
uh, you know, someone that's getting started right out of college again, or maybe they're 30, um, you know, what would you advise them from your experience? What part of real estate should they get in? Well, I think everyone, whether it's a single family, I don't really recommend that. I, I recommend and going and buying a plex, a duplex, a quad, whatever it may be to start with. I think um, you get your, you get, you just get out there and get your feet wet on, on that occasion as far as uh, doing it yourself. You, you got to get skins on the wall and that's the best way to, to, to go in and get your own unit. You know, I, I got to tell the story real quick. Uh, when I was in college and of course playing ball, there was a, a lady named Margie Stabor from College Station, Texas. And she really piqued my interest. She would go around and there was probably 40 units several baseball players that lived in these units. And at the first of the month, she'd pick up rent checks. And I knew most of those units were hers. And, and she still was a realtor in town, but she, she had this passive income. And I said, wow, forget baseball. I mean, I know it's it one day going to end. I like that gig and that. So I, you know, as far as a kid, there's, there's two things. Never hesitate to ask questions. And I immediately asked, Miss DeBoer, everything. And she probably got sick and tired of me, but she, she gave me, you know, I tell, tell my people that, that she gave me more knowledge than really I got out of school down there in a four year degree. But um, I would watch her and, and ask questions. So, you know, to answer your original question, I would say go buy something, you know, be smart about it, get in there, live there, kind of similar to what I did with the house hacking. And, and then uh, if you want to grow from there or you want to sell it or you think you can scale up, then, you know, I, I wouldn't, me, me personally now, I wouldn't waste too much time uh, in that, in that on the single family more so. I would, I would really start looking at, at scaling up at an earlier age. I wouldn't trade how I did it, but if kids asked me today or someone asked me that's even my age, I would say, you know, it just depends on where you're at, your risk averse, but I would, I would, I would go big. No, I like that. I like that. And, and, you know, you also had a construction and renovation business. Uh, you know, did that, it was that something in addition to uh, your rental properties or, you know, did that benefit your, your rental business or was that, some, is that something that, uh, that you would even recommend somebody with say a large portfolio having their own construction business? Oh, absolutely. It's helped me. It helped me. It helps me analyze properties. I know construction. I know how to talk to the general contractor, the sub. Uh, it's a team sport. And I feel like that's another equation that, that benefits me as far as for the future. I can go out and analyze a property uh, ground up and look at the construction, see what's needed. But no, I still do that today. Savoy Builders is a company uh, that I have and I build houses still. And, and I've got a partner in that. Uh, a gentleman named Chris Pruitt, and he is, uh, he knows more about construction than I do. You know, you, I listen to your shows and the smart people hitch their wagon to smart people. And, and I, you know, I, I've said it a hundred times, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to find new friends. And so um, it, it helps me in every aspect. That's what I meant by real estate can be a very broad definition, but uh, my passion is, is building uh, and really whatever the market bears. I, uh, I'll build houses if it's needed, but for personal uh, gratitude and then for obviously my family's sake, we invest in a long-term, um, you know, wealth building that's slow growth. But, uh, you know, the, 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 the great saying ever, I think it was Roy Rogers, I believe, you know, the, the saying of, you know, don't, don't buy real estate and wait, or don't wait and buy real estate buy real estate and wait. So yeah. that's, that's kind of my motto, but I got to stay busy and, and make money to, and to buy real estate. So that's uh, the real estate development company that I have. I still, still do that. And, and it, it helps me every day, Whitney, as far as investing. So as far as the, uh, the syndications that, that you've completed and been involved in, you know, what's been the hardest part of the syndication process for you so far? Wow. That is a great question. You know, uh, Speaking of broad, there is so many smart people in there, whether it's from, you know, the tech industry or, or really, I mean, when, when I would go look at deals, I would go touch them and feel them. I never really put much on a computer until at the end. And now it's, it's a computer-based business. It's, I mean, they analyze things down to a pennies. And, um, 
And uh, sometimes for me, it's analysis paralysis. It's it's crazy how much goes into that when, I mean, most of the time, I'm just like, let's go do a deal. We can be smart about it. But um, I mean, it's it's been fun. It's been fun learning. Um, it's it's very similar to what I've been doing. It's just add another zero at the end. Are you tired of answering emails from investors about when they'll receive their K-1s? Let the real estate CPA handle the accounting and taxes on your next syndication, and they'll file your tax returns by March 15th so you can get your K-1s to your investors by the individual filing deadline on April 15th. Not only will this reduce headaches, but it will help you retain investors over the long term by improving investor experience. The Real Estate CPA is now offering a special virtual workshop to the listeners of the Real Estate Syndication Show on how to answer tax-related questions from your investors. Learn more today by visiting therealestatecpa.com forward slash syndication. So what uh, what kind of buying criteria do you, do you have now as far as looking for, uh, you know, multifamily properties? What size properties are you looking for? And what are some things that are like, okay, this is, you know, when you're talking to a broker, maybe this is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, I'm obviously I want to be a part of um, a class B value add, uh, very similar, probably what you're looking for. I, I don't know if I can say this, but I'm, I'm, I want to be in a red state. Uh, I want to be very tenant based or very uh, landlord friendly. Um, and, and, you know, it's a, it's a capitalism market and I want to be able to, to uh, have access to go in and, and uh, really clean up a place and get the rents raised and, and, and turn the, turn the property around. I, you know, I'm, again, I look at demographics like, like we all do, and it needs to be uh, in a, in a very positive uh, demographic area that's growing and for the foreseeable future is going to grow. Uh, so that's kind of my standards as far as, uh, you know, you add, you know, at the end of it, you start adding crime rate and get down to the nitty gritty. But I mean, just a positive, positive uh, growing place that, that's well represented from the town's aspect. Is there a, a specific size of property? Is it strictly multifamily and certain size of property? You know, I, I, I think, you know, 200 up. I feel like um, from what I've learned, you, you can hire the same amount of people for 200 that you can for 100. And so, again, I'm learning every day, but I, I really like the, the 200 plus play. And is there, you mentioned like landlord friendly uh, states, is there a specific maybe landlord unfriendly issues, you know, that, that maybe that, that we should be aware of when we're purchasing a property that you've encountered? Yeah, just look where everybody's moving away from. Stay away from that area. It's pretty, it's, it, you know, sometimes we want to make a big deal out of it, but it's really black or white. It's so simplistic as far as that. I mean, I, I hate to throw states under the bus, but I, I mean, there's certain states that I just look at and go, you know, it's like the Titanic. So why the heck, there might be deals there, but why would I go invest there? So there. I mean, you know where I'm going with that. Yeah, yeah. If you're, yeah, you're buying real estate on the Titanic. I mean, it doesn't matter how good it is. Does it? Um, so, you know, in your, I guess, in your experience, uh, you know, what's what's a a big reason why people fail in the syndication business, or maybe you see ways that people are being too risky or something like that. Um, you know, I, I think people have a hard time saying no. I think. Um, that's one thing, you know, I, I, I tell my wife and, and, and we, we talk about all the time at an early age, um, you know, you, you got to say no to, and, and this goes back to extracurricular activities. You know, we, we have friends going to Vegas, do this. We were just laser focused. We said, no, we're, you know, I'm not, uh, I, we're pretty simplistic. I, I love my family. I love investing. We love our careers. Uh, you know, so we, we, we would say, know quite a bit um and, and we you know obviously we live below our means that's important um you know it, it's uh we grew organically within the company but um and, and i get asked to do certain things and it just doesn't make sense because it doesn't make sense for my time and and that's whether it's political or, or you know i don't even watch that stuff i mean i I, 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 of course, it matters when it comes to rates and what the rates are, but I don't, I just don't bog myself down with, with that stuff. Cause I, me personally, it, it, I feel like it's a waste of time. So, um, 
you know, as far as I feel like that's helped us uh, to be focused and, and to to uh, live, you know, below our means and, and stay stay within ourselves and just say no. I mean, that's not to say we don't have fun. We got great friends. It's just you you know it. You can get asked to do and spread out so many different directions that it takes away from the overall goal. And and and, and for us other than our faith and, and having a great family, it's, it's uh, passive income. Yeah, no, I, I can relate to that. It's like, there's many things that are good, but what's best, you know, wh- where's the, you know, where can you, where's the best place you can spend your time? It's not those other things are bad in any way, but, but it being laser focused, like you mentioned is, is very important. Um, and so, you know, is there a way that you've recently improved your, your syndication business that we could all apply to ours? You know, early on, um, a mentor, having a mentor is huge. I, I um, you know, I, I was never embarrassed about reaching out and, and asking people um, uh, questions. Um, but, you, you know, I had one gentleman who I, I thought a lot of, and, and he says, never be embarrassed about what you do. So for a while, I mean, for me, for, for even me coming on your show, uh, it took some, some uh, really really gut check and, and, and looking in the mirror and going, you know what, this is what I do. I love it. And, and then there's nothing wrong with talking about it. So when someone asks me what I do, I tell them, you know, I'm a real estate investor and I say it and I, you know, I, I really mean that. And, and it took a while and, and that's hard for some people, but, uh, you know, having a mentor and, 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 and then, you know, the old adage of your network is your net worth. You hear that a thousand times. And, and, and that, you know, with social media. And again, I had a, I had to get over that hurdle as well. And that's really helped. So I've, you know, I've met several people within, the, within this industry, you know, Ben uh, Suttles, you have Ferris Musa, you have Tom Reed, and I could go down the list and, and meeting those guys that's been in this space. And, 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 and it's really helped me kind of get out there. So, you know, my goal was two years ago, all right, you know, you, you know, the game, you know what you're doing, you've got a good resume, quit being embarrassed about it and go make it happen. So I would say, obviously, number one, if you're asking me, find a mentor, ask questions um, and don't be cheap about it. Bomb, bomb something or give them half of the deal. And then to network, you know, go out, listen, heck, Whitney, your, your show's free. You, you got a ton of knowledge. You got a ton of uh, experience and, and you, you can get, a whole years of college education by listening to the, you guys podcast or a few others as well. So, um, you know, I wish they had this 20 years ago for you and I. I agree. I agree. And I appreciate that a lot. It, it's, that's one way I started is by listening to podcasts, really opening my eyes to this business and, and uh, trying to educate myself. But uh, what, what's the one way or the one thing that has contributed to your success? Uh, um one thing that has contributed to my success is, is back to the mentor, um, really learning from, um, those guys or girls, those guys or girls mistakes. I had several that, you know, I can count on probably both hands. It's been a big, big part of my life. My parents, um, and, and, and that generation, I say this all the time. They love to talk. They'll tell you their, their, their success stories, but more importantly, they'll tell you they'll fail. They'll tell you their, failures and if you could live and learn from those and not make those mistakes then to me that's another whole semester of 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 education there so um you know learning from others mistakes has been a big play for me and and i've tried to try to uh to take that and 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 teach that as well chad you know before we have to go how, how do you like to give back oh that's easy i i love um, you know, there's not one organization. I love really back to the one-on-one with the tenants. And I do kind of miss that, but, uh, I love going to the local mall around, uh, school, start of school in August and, and, uh, and buying, just spending all day there and buying kids new school shoes and, and seeing the parents look at me like, you're really going to buy these? And I said, absolutely. You go take your funds and, and maybe buy school supplies or, or, or allocate them somewhere else. Let the kid get the exact shoe he wants. And it's on me. And so I stay there all day and get to hear all these stories and see these kids smile because I know back when 
you know, when I was that age, shoes was everything. And they still are your first day outfit. And, and so seeing the kids get all excited about getting the exact shoe they want and seeing the parents just overwhelmed, that, that right there, then giving to an organization, which nothing wrong with that. I just, I like to see the expression and you see how the gratitude, how thankful they are. And then you see the kids, you know, uh, that's one less thing off the parents plate. That's one thing that the kids are excited about. And maybe they can, what's the most important is go to school learn and, and uh, get an education. Uh, you know, I just wish they'd, I wish they would uh, implement uh, maybe Robert Kiyosaki's book in, in the, in the school, school administration and, and get some of those silly books out and let them learn some stuff. I agree. There's, there's definitely a few <laughs> books that I, that I've come across, you know, going down this entre- entrepreneurial journey that that would be beneficial in school. Now that's awesome though. I haven't heard anybody that's doing anything like that, uh, going and buying, buying those shoes and, and what an influence, you know, hopefully you're having on those fans. A lot of fun to do. A lot of fun to do that. Well, uh, Chad, you know, you've been a great guest and uh, tell the listeners how they can uh, learn more about your business, your company and, and get in touch with you. Sure. Uh, my website is SavoyCompanies.com. It's all lowercase S-A-V-O-Y-C-O-M-P-A-N-I-E-S.com. And then um, on top of that, my, my email address is Chad at SavoyCompanies.com, all lowercase. And uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, I'll be um, I'll be happy to talk or discuss with anybody first learning or, or just wanting to uh, just chat or talk. No problem. Great. Chad, thank you so much for your time, the value you provided from your experience and, and uh, just being so experienced in many avenues of this business. And, you know, I appreciate the listeners being with us today. I hope, I hope you all will reach out to Chad. I hope you'll also go to LifeBridge Capital and connect with me and also join us on the Facebook group, The Real Estate Syndication Show, so we can all learn and grow our businesses together from experts like Chad. And we will talk to each of you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.